So, welcome back to the vlog. Today, I am on my way over to see Bike Fit James and I've also had a really exciting delivery just come in. So a massive shout out to the guys over at Bont who have set me up with their latest and greatest of road shoes and mountain bike shoes. Both the Vapor S for road cycling and then also the Vapor G for all of my mountain bike adventures. I went for the white in the road shoe and then the black in the mountain bike shoe. Look at those. So I've previously owned a pair of Bont shoes in the past. I owned a pair of the Vapor S's about three years ago during my racing, but I'm over the moon to be back in a pair of Bont racing shoes, especially for my mountain biking races that are coming up this year. So if you guys have not heard of Bont cycling shoes before, they are actually an Australian based company, uh, which started off in the world of inline skating, I believe, before making the transition to cycling. I think it was all the way back in 2010 when I first saw a pair of Bont cycling shoes on none other than Bradley Wiggins, who then I think went on to win the 2012 Tour de France with a pair. Now what makes these shoes specifically, and also the mountain bike variant, different from most other road shoes is the fact that they are heat moldable, meaning that you can put them in the oven so that the carbon then becomes soft, you can slot your foot in, and then they actually mold around your foot for maximum efficiency and comfort. So I guess we need to go and get them molded. And that's where I'm gonna go off to now. You're a bit warm. I'm sweating, it's really hot in here. <laughs> I'm not especially, joking. Especially after just sprinting here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's sticky, sticky warm. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm all right, it's like there's in the world to live. I guess first things first, you try it on and you see that it fits, right? Yeah, so generally speaking, you want the shoe to sort of more or less mimic the shape of the foot. Uh, so if, obviously if your foot is significantly wider than the shoe, it's gonna cause you problems. Particularly in a shoe like a Bont, which has a bathtub configuration uh, of the sole, which stops the foot from splaying. But what that, which is great because it just generally yields a lot more stability. But what it does mean that it's not a very forgiving shoe. So if it doesn't fit you, if it doesn't fit you more or less in the right way, then it's going to wreak havoc on your, on your probably your pinky toe. Uh, but as we can see, with your feet, the shoe more or less mimics the shape of your foot. And I can see whilst, whilst trying it on, I was thinking, wow, that's, that's on the verge of being too tight, but sticking it in yeah. the oven is only going to make it better. better. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're so a little skinny dog feet. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do now. Yeah. What oven is that? Is it, is it an actual oven? Yes. Is it an actual oven or yes. is it a shoe oven? Yeah. Proper oven. All oh, right. Oh, there you go. It's like a 50, cr 50 pound job from um, Curry or something. For molding uh, bomb shoes, you need one tool, a screwdriver. <laughs> it's extremely useful for getting out the footbeds because bonts don't have a huge amount of space inside of them. So there you go. it's easy to get them out. But go. also the blunt end of the screwdriver is very good at um, pushing out any pressure points inside the shoe. So once the oven is up to temperature, and in this case, 70 degrees, yeah, in this case, 70 degrees, uh, it is then time to stick them in. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. And then the stopwatch begins. I must confess, I wanted to do the black ones first, just in case we cock it up. And, yeah. Because um, we don't want those to go brown, do we? It's not my beautiful should, should we, white. Should we tell your viewers what happened to me many years ago, once a customer came into the shop? with a pair of shoes that he bought from us you know, days prior. And he presented this shoe that was, well, that color. <laughs> he said, I've tried to mold these shoes, but they've gone brown. <laughs> to which I had to respond, well, yeah, you've cooked them. <laughs> so uh, we stick to 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. Excellent. They're warm. Like a light segment. Oh my goodness. They're like warm, toasty. So once it comes out of the oven, you're just opening it up a yeah, little bit. Yeah, splay it open so if it goes in nice and easily. Yep. Insole back in. Insole back in. Tighten them up. Not too tight. Yeah. But a little bit tight. And then am I, ju am I just sitting just here? Just foot. Yeah. yeah. So pushing your foot into the back of the shoe and then molding around the heel cup. And if you've got any um, hot spots in the, in the forefoot, we'll, we'll mold them, we'll push them out with a screwdriver. Very good. But is that feeling okay? It feels great. Oh, so I'm sweet. just sitting here, not standing, right? Yes. 
no, sitting, no standing up, because as you stand up, your feet splay, so you then, uh, the shoe will um, mould to a bigger foot. We want to stop the foot from splaying, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the turn of the road shoes. Let's try not to make them go brown. <laughs> Take Dances. Let's open it up, see what it is. He's a menace. What is he ordering he is now? He's a menace. Red Bull delivered here in droves. <laughs> Why can't he deliver it to his own house? It's a pair of rims for you, Fran. No, these aren't for Fran. I don't know why. I don't know why he's got his name on That's bizarre. He's about to reach for these, but they won't go on these. <laughs> no, they won't. Do you remember in, in Vietnam when my cleat fell loose and I couldn't get my foot out of the pedal? So I could have killed you. Yeah. <laughs> How did we fix that? Did we just go with one? I don't know. I... One bolt in the cleat. We're oh. sat there looking out for King Kong, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Such big news coming that I can't possibly mm -hmm. divulge on your YouTube channel. Not at all. Oh. Top secret. Yes. Have they? He's getting set up for his mountain biking. I bought so much kit over the last really? month or so. Yeah. Have you gone full mountain biking, like different helmet, different? <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I've got helmet. mountain biking helmet. Oh really? Can't ride a road helmet on a mountain bike. <laughs> Couldn't possibly do that. Nah. <laughs> Should use these to mold your shoes. <laughs> yeah. So I notice you've slammed these uh, SPD cleats all the way back, right? Boys. Yeah. The reason for it is that this is a sh lever uh so there's quite a lot of talk about aligning the center of the cleat mm -hmm. which is also the center of the pedal axle with the ball of the foot now uh, if you do that you'll get foot problems probably knee problems and probably saddle issues mostly because if you align the ball of the foot with the center of the cleat the pedal axle it creates quite a lot of tension through the forefoot and this is a very dense capillary structure here there's lots of very teeny tiny bones there's over 230 bones in the human foot and if you overload in that area that region it creates tension and just typically destabilizes the whole kinetic chain the knees the hips the bones so there you have it don't you take go. your cleats too far forward taking the cleat further back uh, if you consider the foot as a lever, by taking the cleat further back, you reduce the length of the lever, thus you increase or improve stability through the ankle joint, which is a very mobile joint. As a rule, what I would generally do is look to locate the cleat, the cleat between 20 and 30 mil behind the first metatarsal. The first okay. metatarsal is the ball of your foot. Uh, on the grounds, and obviously that will depend on the size of the foot. The bigger the foot, the further, the, the closer to 30 mil you probably need it. I, generally speaking, I find myself taking the cleat as far back on a shoe as it'll go, which I think is really more a testament to how cycling shoes are designed than anything else. Mm. It's also worth noting that the, the cleat holes in cycling shoes are not all created equal. Some brands have a very forward cleat location, thus have a very strong correlation with pain and injury mm -hmm. uh, than other brands. Any idea where that sits? Bond's pretty far back, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In fact, to, to to that end, actually, I would say Bond's I more often than not don't slam all the way back okay. on the road shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these, yeah, I think you'll probably be all right like that. So that is two pairs of molded shoes, and I can tell you, after molding them, they feel completely, completely different than as they do coming out of the box. So, so if you're thinking if molding them is necessary, absolutely get them molded, and ideally. By someone who knows what they're doing. So the best way of understanding where uh, your cleats need to be is a piece of white tape. Now some people draw on their shoes. Oh, yeah. That's a bit silly really isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to apply some tape here. Any tape will work but white tape tends to be easier because you can mark it and see rather than black tape. So feet flat on the floor and we're looking for the first metatarsal, ball of your foot is there. There, oh, and two. So we're gonna bolt the base plates on here for you. Yep. If you're a speed play user, yep. I never use the middle, never use the silver screws. Right. On the grounds that they are usually too long, so they end up going all the way through the sole and into the bottom of your foot. Interesting. 
never a good thing. So the black ones are slightly smaller, are they? Black ones are a lot shorter. Yeah. So, Speedplay have this nifty little center line and actually on uh, Shimano cleats, there's a notch in the middle of the cleat, mm -hmm. uh, same with looks. So what we're doing, <laughs> quick draw my draw, beat me to it. So what we're doing is <sighs> marking that there. So yeah, we've got about 15, 20 mil there. Mm -hmm. So basically you're, you're uh, aligning that notch with your, with your line and then measure the difference. That's how far behind the first metal tassel your cleats are. Excellent. Thank you very much for the setup. Well, if I have any problems, I know where to come, right? Yeah, go to sign for it. <laughs>